For another perspective now on the comparisons being made between the drive for independence in Spain and Quebec's sovereignty movement, I spoke to Manon Cornelier. She's an editorial writer for Le Devoir. This independence drive in Spain, the crisis in Spain, mm. has drawn attention in Quebec. The PQ leader, Jean Felice, compared it to the October crisis. The premier said that's, you know, comparisons are risky. Yeah. Are there fair comparisons, in your view, between the situation there and what we've seen in Quebec? The, not when you look at the constitutional order, when, not when you look at the way to answer to a referendum. It's totally different. But at, on the deepest level, Yes, there's similarity. There are some national groups that want to have more autonomy, who want to have a, a space for, of their own. And so there's, there you have a sim similarity. And the fact that the uh, country have to deal with that. Uh, Spain is have no tradition of a federalism, have no, uh, not f far long ago, 25 years, it was a dictatorship, so where they were repressing a, my, a national minority, so this feeling of uh, the desire for autonomy uh, I, and to express their own culture, language, and so on, is pretty deep and have been exacerbated by that. So there you can see some similarity in terms of having some national groups who want to express themselves. But on the uh, logistic level or the way they answer to it, it's totally different. We don't know yet how this is all going to end up in Spain, but when nationalists or separatists in Quebec see these kinds of stories play themselves out, does it give them encouragement? Does it give them, you know, hope or uh, perhaps just even a sense of identification? I would say more a sense of identification because for uh, some sovereign. They, they, they tend to have a sympathy for the Catalonian peoples. They will support their uh, quest for independence, uh, but not. Uh, and the fact that there was a repression, the day of the, the voting day, on voting day, uh, the fact that people who were pacific, who were not using violence, were repressed. Uh, this uh, make even people who are not sovereignists having sympathy for them because it's a minority that is unable to express itself. Uh, when in Quebec, people, okay, there's a referendum and the, the participation rate is always 95, 98%. Uh, so, so people want to express themselves, but the fact that there was repression, the fact that the state said that they would intervene, that there was uh, all this conflict with Madrid, uh, people tend to have sympathy for the Catalonian. It doesn't mean that for, but for sovereignists, they see it as a, a boost to uh, their opinion, their position, uh, like they felt when they were the Scotland, the Scotland uh, referendum. referendum. And, and so, yes, the, um, the sympathy make it that they feel a link, uh, support for them. Right. Put the federal government in this picture. Uh, the prime minister has said he supports a united mm. Spain. Um, at the same time, we know that uh, there are Basque leaders, and mm. that Basque region in Spain has a history of separatism yeah. as well. They're here meeting with federal officials and Quebec officials yeah. as well. Uh, how do you think the federal government looks at this? The Basque are not asking for independence right now. So it's more an autonomous movement. So maybe it's why the federal government feel less threatened to meet with them. Uh, but for the, um, the federal government, I understand that they're defending the unified, united uh, Spain because that's the constitutional order in Spain. And in Canada, that's what the government is defending when he has the Clarity Act and, and so on. It, the Clarity Act is an uh, object of debate in Quebec because some people say it goes farther than the decision of the Supreme Court that said that a province uh, uh, can have a referendum and if there's uh, a clear expression of a desire for independence, for example, uh, the other partner have an obligation at least to negotiate, which uh, is, this is totally a foreign to Spain, uh, where it's a united country that have a, really a rules that against the secession of any uh, parts of it. So the, gover the, the federal government is defending the constitutional order. It's a different order. But the, the idea of the rule of law is really a strong point they want to defend. Uh, they were criticized in Quebec because, yes, you can defi def defend the constitutional order, but 
this doesn't prevent you to criticize the fact that Madrid used uh, strong arm tactics to try to avoid having a vote. Uh, they, they used the police, uh, they, they, they criminalized, in effect, mm -hmm. uh, demo people who were uh, democrati democratically elected and also that they did, did nothing violent. And so uh, I think this could have been criticized that the best way to resolve an issue like this is dialogue, it's discussion. We also have to see that on this independentist side, you had people who are really hard line on their position and were pushing on the, uh, the prime minister also there to declare independence when he was hesitating for one day uh, having uh, early election or declaring right, independence. In Spain, yeah. So you have hard lines on both sides, but the fact that uh, they the use strong harm tax tactics, repress people the day of the vote, and the, to the point that people with their kids sleep in school to be able to vote the day after, there I think uh, Canada could have said uh, we want the respect of the constitutional order, but I don't. The way to get it, it's not using violence because they rad radicalize people in doing so. Right. Thank you very much for your Thank perspective you. on this. Pleasure.